From the creator of the open source scan converter, Marcus brings us the DEX VDISL, or simply the DEX. The add-on for the DE10 Nano, an FPGA board most synonymous with the Mister project, is a two-in-one device, a line multiplier like the OSSC, as well as a full-fledged scaler, including 15 kHz downscaling. It's sold by Video Game Perfection, and this video isn't in any way a sponsored review, as I paid for this product myself, so expect my honest opinions. I'm on the latest firmware 0.67 from August 2023. Marcus sporadically releases new updates, so keep that in mind as some issues could be ironed out in the future. The kit comes with the bare board as well as the analog audio ribbon cable. I opted for the remote control and overlay bundle which cost me $190 delivered. And to keep it simple, all prices are in Australian dollars and include shipping, which is often higher than the rest of the world. The DEX functions fine as is, but I went for an all-inclusive setup, where I bought the character LCD status display from Mauser for $47. Everything from component to RGB, including HVSync, goes into the SCART port without needing a sync combiner. HVSync are passed in a non-standard fashion through spare SCART pins 10 and 12. So to make life easier, I suggest getting the analog input board fabricated using the files from the DEX's GitHub. And I went through JLC PCB to have them made for about four bucks. You'll need to solder a handful of parts, which I bought from AliExpress for around $16, totaling the DEX bundle to $257. But wait, I haven't factored in the most expensive item, the DE10 Nano. These used to be much cheaper, and as of today, buying directly from Terrasic with shipping will set you back $420. Blaze it. Therefore, the current value of the complete DEX bundle tallies to a whopping $677. And suddenly, the DEX is more expensive than the plug and play RetroTink 5X, delivered to my door for $613. This is, however, an unfair assessment, as it doesn't account for the DEX's target audience, those that already own a DE10 for the Mr. Project. Especially now that Marcus has released an alternate firmware for mounting the DEX to the DE10's GPIO1, which is traditionally used for an analog board. This means the SD RAM and DEX never need to be removed, and the DE10's function as a mister or scaler is dictated solely by changing the SD card. But this only further fragments the typical Mr. End user that already has a neat little setup much like this one. If you have the DEX and SDRAM connected, suddenly you'll sacrifice some of the Mr.'s features, such as simultaneous analog and digital video output, you lose, where you'll need to use direct HDMI video to output to a 15 kHz CRT. And emitting the analog board, prevents you from easily using snack adapters and an MT32 Pi hat. Lose! You'll also be unable to have a second SD RAM for some upcoming cores. Lose! And unless someone designs a 3D printed case, say goodbye to that neat little enclosure. <laughs> so if you're already in the Mr. Ecosystem and can go without these features, then the DE10 becomes a dual purpose retro gaming rig and a high quality scaler that surpasses the original OSSC. Respectfully, I felt that the quick start PDF guide on the DEX's wiki was helpful but in dire need of a mini overhaul, as most of the info to help get started were scattered in different corners of the web. The DEX was initially designed to be plugged into the DE10's GPIO2, but you would never know about the alternate configuration that lets you keep the SD RAM attached because it was announced in a VGP forum, which contains a link to the GPIO1 specific firmware. Some might have been put off with the initial configuration, and you gotta flaunt this game changing feature that elevates the product. 
Even if you miss the announcement and happen to stumble across the GPIO1 branch on GitHub, you'd need to dig up Marcus's post to know the audio ribbon cable needs extending to reach the same pins on the DE10 that they were intended for. The character LCD was briefly mentioned in the listing's description, but nowhere about soldering, and all I had to go by were some photos on a shmup's forum post. So take this as a somewhat setup guide for the GPIO1 configuration. You'll need to flash the latest firmware to a micro SD card, which is found in the corresponding GPIO1 GitHub branch. Navigate to board, DE10, software, bootloader and grab the zip file. Use Belina Etcher to write the firmware to the SD card. And for future updates, you just need to replace the .rbf file with the latest from the output folder in the same branch. Now for the character LCD display, I wasn't sure if there was meant to be a right angle adapter as like I said there was little info. Therefore I bent the pins to a right angle. I however had to go back and bend them to 45 degrees as the LCD blocked the micro SD slot on the DE10. Then I inserted the pins and soldered like so. Next grab your little Zimbabwe flag which needs to be modified to reach over to the pins in front of the SD RAM. You can splice in some wires to add some length, or better yet, use an extension cable. I salvaged one that needed some minor alterations to make it fit. From the Ethernet side of the DE10, leave the first four pins vacant and plug into the next four. Make note of the coloured wire closest to the Ethernet port, as this corresponds to the outermost pin of the inner row on the decks. If you get confused, then just refer back to the PDF quick start guide. Whether you want to use the decks for up or downscaling, like I mentioned, I highly recommend assembling the analog input board to easily input VGA and component through SCART. I've put links to the exact parts I bought from AliExpress, but I don't expect them to be valid forever. I found these fully assembled audio boards for dirt cheap, which adds stereo RCA and 3.5mm auxiliary inputs. The analog board plugs into the decks with a male to male SCART cable, so to tidy up the input side, I went with the SCART coupler by Bob from Retro RGB. This is optional, but if you do go down this route, then you'll want to pay attention. The SCART coupler doesn't connect those unused SCART pins that are needed to pass through HV sync. So I added two wires to join pins 10 and 12 to either side. However, the SCART coupler flips the analog input board upside down, making it difficult to get to those component inputs. Using a leftover SCART coupler board as a template, I flipped one of the SCART heads, severed each trace, and bridged each corresponding pin on either side with a short conductor. My little worm farm looks ugly as hell, but it's functional and the analog input board now faces the right way up. The DEX itself is fairly lightweight, but with the SCART coupler and analog board, I needed to sort out some strain relief. And no, not that kind of strain relief. For the Mister, I use a triple controller Demon Byte adapter from Timville, which was a near perfect height to tuck underneath the DEX and SCART coupler and use some adhesive foam to fill in the rest. It ain't pretty, but it gets the job done. I have an HDMI to VGA DAC on the analog input board, and another on the DE10's HDMI output, with a passive HV sync combiner inside a SCART head to output RGBS. You'll first need to power the unit connected to an HD display to navigate to scalar options, and switch the output type to CRT, and select a 15 kHz resolution. Then back out to the menu and go into output options to select scalar. Input a 720p HDMI video source, I'll explain why 720 and not 480p later, and select the RGB HV input format. Without powering off the DE10, unplug from the HDMI display and output to your CRT with a sync combiner or HDMI to component adapter. Then save the preset, so from here on it'll always boot into downscaling mode. 
as long as the output is set to scalar, the highest resolution DEX can receive for 15kHz downscaling is 720p, as the added frame buffer offers more flexibility. Whereas the minimal lag line multiplier mode can only receive as high as 480p. For the latter, you'll need to go into the line multiplier options and select 480p to be processed into 240p. Then back out to the output option and switch the operating mode over to line multiplier. 480p downscale to any 15 kHz resolution in this mode was essentially zero lag, making it the fastest downscaler I've seen so far. Whereas in scalar mode, I can forgive the two frames of lag as it's non-variable. 480i has a dedicated 4x3 and widescreen output, whereas 240p outputs a letterbox 16x9 by default, which can be stretched vertically to fit a 4x3 display in the aspect ratio section of the scalar options. The ultra sharp 240p downscale is accomplished by only drawing a single set of fields, while taking every other field to simply delete. It's much the same for 720p, where it deletes every two out of three lines. The only problem is that anything on those deleted lines are lost for good, unless you shift the downscaled picture vertically to select which line to keep. Translating to gameplay and line deletion makes games that were drawn in or an upscaled integer of 240p incredibly sharp. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection on the Nintendo Switch, downscaled from 720 to 240p, looks virtually identical to native 240p video on the corresponding Mr. Arcade Core. Sonic Mania is also a native 240p game that's been upscaled for modern consoles, which again looks incredibly accurate when downscaled to 240p like it was played straight from a Sega Mega Drive. This sharp scale is a contrast to the Corio 2 TV1750, which adopts a line blending algorithm of downscaling, therefore producing a softer image. The flaws of line deletion do become apparent when the game wasn't drawn in 240 or 480p. Ever seen Mario without facial hair? Super Mario Maker on the Nintendo Wii U is a native 720p game, so when downscaling to 240p, you'll need to shift the image vertically to decide which of Mario's assets are most important. A full hat, mustache or feet, as you can't have them all at once. Line deletion also changes the shape of circular objects, and only drawing one out of the 720p's three lines results in some pretty distracting shimmer when traversing vertically. Comparatively to the Corio scaler, the blurrier line average Mario is a trade-off that yields better vertical blending. And playing an entire makeshift level with the DEX's line deletion has too many trade-offs to make this enjoyable. So then why not just output 480p to delete only one set of lines, therefore omitting the shimmer? That's a great idea, except that 480p VGA input, for whatever reason, was more often than not unstable. Bro, come on! Sometimes there'd be no picture, or it would just jump like crazy. I tried to play with the scaler's frame lock settings and phase adjustments, which the latter helped to reduce the hiccups, but never completely. It behaved the same in line multiplier mode, no matter what console was sending 480p. So unless this is fixed, that zero lag 480p downscaling is a no-go, or at least only for RGB HV, as there were no problems downscaling the PSP from 480p. The DEX was very competent at stretching and centering the PSP's windowed video using the zoom and phase options, all while maintaining a sharp scale from 480p down to 480i. Line deletion to achieve 240p also has its drawbacks for 3D games, creating a stair effect on linear structures, which is again overcome by the Corio's line blending. So you'd think it should be less apparent with the DEX in 480i, which it is. But again, the Corio's softer downscaler better irons out the jagged edges. 
Once I actually sat down to play a 3D game in 480i, the serrated edges became less of a distraction and I was really enjoying the vibrant picture. To its credit, the DeX is a little sharper when downscaling to 480i compared to the Wii U's internally scaled image, and there's no additional interlace flicker. Also worth noting is that I never once experienced any screen tearing or frame skips for a 720p input. As I wrap up, I just want to preface that I've intentionally focused solely on the DEX's 15kHz downscaling prowess, which doesn't even scratch the surface of its many features. So please don't be put off by any of the scaling artifacts and 480p hiccups if you're planning to upscale. So can I recommend the DEX for downscaling? While the lack of an analog input board, LCD display and case were likely cost cutting measures, and although not technically required, an option for a solderless all-in kit would remove barriers for some Mr. Owners. I'm not sure how high a priority is optimizing 15 kHz output for future firmwares, but as it stands, it's a competent downscaler that's just not quite fully matured yet. Yes, it outputs 240p and 480i, can accept a 720p input, is fairly low latency and has great picture adjustments and presets. But feed it anything other than 240p upscaled video and you've bought yourself a one-way ticket to Shimmerville, capital of Jagged City. I really was expecting line deletion to trump the other downscalers I've tried so far, but I'm now seeing the benefit in line blending instead. My hopes for future firmwares lie in addressing the 480p RGB HV input for that lightning fast downscaling in line multiplier mode. And although I'm sure it's a lot of work, an option to line average as well. Overall, for those in the Mr. scene, it's a fun experimental add-on which could be a cheaper alternative to another line deleting downscaler that I'll feature in next episode. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming.